Hello everyone, I am Balatron, and I'm High Hero Knight, welcome to the channel, and today we are going to share our review of the most recent Marvel Cinematic Movie, The Black Panther. I give that movie a B plus. I give the movie an A minus. Black Panther was introduced in the third Captain America film, and now in this film it focuses on him, on his country of Wakanda, on him officially taking the, the throne as king, but there is a mysterious new villain that wants to overthrow T'Challa, become Black Panther and king, and then wage war on the rest of the world. And quite frankly, his uh, motivations are pretty legitimate. This movie was one of the biggest surprise hits of the MCU at the time when we we're recording this. It's been five weeks at number one in the United States domestic box office. That's practically unheard of in this day and age. And last time that happened, with, I believe, was Avatar. So uh, does it really live up to the hype? Well, let's talk about it and find out. This movie was very excellent. There's only really one significant problem that we had with the film, and that was what happens with the villains. Uh, starting with uh, Killmonger. Killmonger is the main villain in this movie. But I don't really see him as a villain. I see him as an individual who has been wrong and he feels like he needs to fight for what he believes it is to right that wrong. He had a very good motivation about his actions and he had a very good character, very good costume, very good fighting sequence. I really enjoyed this character and I wish that he did not perish in the movie. I wish he would have survived and worked out his problems with the other people of Wakanda, but alas, it was not meant to be. Yeah, since, uh, and I don't mind so much that he died if he were the only villain that died, uh, but they also killed off Claw. And not only did they kill Claw, but Claw and Black Panther have less than 60 seconds of direct screen time. I mean, there's a great chase sequence where Black Panther and uh, the, his teammates are trying to hunt down Claw in this wonderful uh, uh, traffic uh, action sequence. But still, the actual direct face-to-face on-screen time is less than six seconds, and Claw is killed by Killmonger, and it's like, you killed off two top villains? Does Andy Serkis have a strict two-movie-per-franchise contract with Disney? And not only that, but Man-Ape, I mean, he's not called Man-Ape in the movie, just uh, for things to be a little more politically correct, but still, I'm going to call him Man-Ape because I'll, I know I'll just butcher his actual name. Uh, but Man-Ape becomes befriended of T'Challa, and, return, and that uh, mountain tribe gets back into the fold of the Wakanda main tribe, so that's settled. But then later on, I learned that Nakia, the love interest of Black Panther, in the comics, that character is actually unvillain. So... In this movie, she's not a villain, she's a hero, and they have an even stronger bond in this movie, so unless something happens to her and it has like brain damage or something, or they decide to make a totally different person uh, that villain, they've eliminated four villains. And the biggest complaint about the Marvel Cinematic Universe is villains. Now, last year, they gave us uh, Ego and Hera and the Vulture, so they think, okay, fine, they defined doing some great villains that we can root for, and this movie, we got four villains, and two of them get tilled, killed, and two others get pretty much eliminated from being uh, antagonists, significant antagonists. So it's like, you, you might as well just make the villains crap if you want to do that. It, it was so frustrating. Some people think that Killmonger is the best uh, villain of the MCU, uh, uh, except for Loki, of course. Loki's Loki, but still. <laughs> yeah, it was just really disappointing that you have all these great villains, potential villains, and they just said, yeah. <laughs> We're now going to discuss about what we did enjoy about the movie. One thing I really enjoyed about this movie was the costume and set design of the movie. Me, with coming from a performing background, I understand um, what it takes, like the, there's more than one aspect to make a production very good. There's the costume aspect, the scenery aspect, makeup aspect. There's lots of things that goes on to make a very nice production stand out and wow. The costumes were very Afrocentric 
So you definitely get a sense of feeling that you're in the country of Africa. It was very colorful, very vibrant. I like all the different dashiki inspired pieces that the not only the villagers wore, like the different tribes wore, and also the warrior princesses, the female, the female soldiers in the movie. Their costumes were awesome. They looked very fierce and tough. Costume designed both Black Panther and Killmonger. You know, they both look similar. There was still some slight distinction, but you can probably tell the difference. But again, a very cool costume design. Mm -hmm. So just overall, I really enjoyed the costume design of all the characters and also the set locations where you could tell you see the that savannah of Africa. And then also inside in the, the tech lab, see what the, what the science going on. So you see the diversity of the nature and then science. And then you get the urban setting when you see that car sequence in Korea. So you get nice different settings in this movie. And I enjoyed it. Yeah, the costumes were very excellent. And one particular costume that I wish was used more was Killmonger's uh, mask. That, you know, that horn mask. That was such an amazing mask. Why was that not featured more in the movie? I, w I wish it would have been featured more in the movie. Heck, I wish it would have been part of the climax where, you know, he gets his own uh, personalized body armor and just has it modified to have that uh, helmet to say, like, well, this is my era now. This is going to be totally different. That's a fantastic helmet. Why was it that used more in the movie? <laughs> when people ask me, Balotron, What's your favorite type of movie? I tell them I really enjoy comic book movies, action-based movies, and fighting movies. And this movie, The Black Panther, had a combination of all three. One of the battles that they feature in the movie had they have very strong women warriors of Wakanda, and they battle out in this battle with other tribes. And I really enjoyed seeing a very good showcase of very strong black. I should make said black. Warriors, women in this movie. There's not that many movies I have seen in, in my lifetime that showcase very strong black women fighting in movies. So this one really displayed that and the power and finesse. So I really enjoyed the battle of eight that happened in that movie with the other tribes. And the one fight, fighting battle I really enjoyed was the end between Black Panther and Killmonger. Even though we did know, kind of know that Black Panther will overcome at the end, the battle sequence gave a sense that Killmonger might win that battle and stay crowned king of Wakanda. But alas, that was not meant to be. And also, I really enjoyed the chase sequence, the car chase sequence in Korea that happened in the movie. Almost came, gave me a sense of almost like Fast and the Furious to some extent. But it was very nice. <laughs> And it was energetic and high octane. And going back to what you're saying about uh, the fight between Killmonger and Black Panther at the end, even though we know T'Challa is going to appear in the uh, upcoming MCU movies, there definitely is some type of tension because when Killmonger first uh, challenges for the throne, he wins. You know, usually in these movies, the villain does some type of underhanded thing. He cheats. He uh to poison somebody or has like a you know someone on the inside helping him. No, he just straight up wins <laughs> the initial conflict. So when they fight again, you really believe that uh Killmonger might just straight up win again. So that's fantastic. That's a really uh helps keep the tension of what's going to happen, even though we know Vichita will appear, will Killmonger survive or Thrive or you know still win. I mean you know it, it's still a superhero movie. You know, the guy is going to win, but there's still that little bit of tension. Of, hey, he uh, come on one once. Could he win again? Now one of the things I love about this movie is that it's self-contained, and I didn't even realize how self-contained it was until our other brother. Uh, asked me, hey, what other uh, characters and heroes are in the movie? And I realized, wait a minute, there weren't any. I mean, at the very, very end, we see uh, the Winter Soldier, but that's at the end has pretty much nothing to do with the movie. And there is a couple of lines here and there that refers to uh, the Captain America movie. But still, mm -hmm. a person could come see this movie, not have seen any of the other Marvel movies, and totally enjoy it. They don't talk about uh, Tony Stark. They don't talk about uh, the Wachovia Accords. They don't talk about 
anything about that. It's a totally self-contained movie. Doesn't talk about uh, the heroes fighting heroes or anything like that. It's like, no, you can come in totally fresh as a daisy and enjoy it. Or you can see all the other Marvel movies and still enjoy it. But, but yeah, it is a self-contained solo movie. I <laughs> definitely greatly appreciate the actual solo movie. I, I still love some of the other cameos, okay? In Ant-Man, when Ant-Man fights uh, Falcon. I love that scene, but still, I just feel like, hey, wait a minute. After all this time, we, we once again have a solo movie, which makes sense because Wakanda's going to be isolated, so the movie should feel isolated. Another thing that I greatly enjoyed about this movie was that T'Challa was actually sociable, uh, not only with his inner circle of friends, but you see him walking amongst the people of his kingdom. He has friends. Like Even though he's king, he's still genuinely friends with uh, the various other uh, leaders of the tribes, like the border tribe. He's uh, friends with that guy. And I am tired of this modern superheroes that are always moody and sad and brooding like the X-Men. Oh, the world hates and fears us. Or Spider-Man. Oh, I'm always broke. Well, I'm worried about this person getting hurt or that person getting hurt. Or, uh, you know, Superman. Superman, we've got a movie where Jonathan Kent is telling young Clark Kent that maybe he shouldn't rescue children. That maybe she let a, a school bus full of kids drown. What? So, yeah, I, I, I didn't want to have another movie about a moody superhero. Like Ant-Man, he's dealing with the problem of divorce. Uh, Captain America, he's a man out of time. Not almost everybody knows he's dead. Uh, you know, it's like it's one tragic thing. I, feel like I don't mind difficulty, but I didn't want to have another superhero without this movie. Especially since Shakala is rich, handsome, intelligent, has uh, a group of bodyguards made of all women. Uh, you know, his father passed away, but still he has a loving mother, has a fun-loving sister. Like, I don't want to see this guy being, oh, I'm so sad. Oh, oh how heavy wears the crown. Oh, I'm not ready for this. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, no, I, it was so nice to see him being happy and chatty. Even his, his love interest, at no point did he say, oh, this is too dangerous, or this is too risky. He doesn't say that to his sister for the climactic value. The only one he was protecting is his mom, you know, because she's older, but still, you know, when she was played by Angela Bassett, she probably still had those Tina Turner muscles in there somewhere. <laughs> you know, she'd go on the battlefield too. So it's just refreshing. It's like, you know, here's this character who's, you know, sad that he's lost his father and has to uh, deal with being king, but still, he's happy. He's sociable. He's having fun. He's using missions as dating experiences. So yeah, just finally, you know, it's a, 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 a joyful, happy superhero. Thank you. <laughs> so in conclusion, Black Panther is an awesome movie because it combines three things I really enjoyed in a movie. Superheroes, action, fighting. Again, this movie had a combination of all three on top of that, the wonderful and marvelous, beautiful, gorgeous costume design choices and set design choices. The only time I gave this movie a B plus and not an A, I'm just biased against movies that are over two hours long. And this is a kind of very long movie. It's over two hours long, but it's still quite enjoyable. So that's that. And I love this movie very much. I've seen it. Uh, twice. I want to probably see at least one more time in theaters. I definitely want to buy it when it comes out on Blu-ray. Uh, honestly, if it weren't for what happens with the villains, this would be an A-plus for me. Uh, but like I said, when I first saw the movie, it was okay. You killed off two villains. You refrained one villain. That's an A-minus. And then when I later find out that the key was supposed to be a villain or could have been a villain, I'm like, so that's four villains. Almost put it down to a B-plus. You're like, you know what? I still love this. I still have fun. It gave me so much what I wanted to see in this movie of, of Black Panther. And it gave me so many things I didn't even know I wanted, like an actual solo film. So that's why I kept it in the A range. But still, those what they did with those <laughs> is what still makes it from being perfect. So uh, once again, I give the movie an A minus. I give it a B plus. 
Okay, thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate it. Once again, I am High Hill Knight. And I am Balatron. Thank you again. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. And remember, find inspiration every day. Hey, before we go, we just wanted to mention two more things about uh, the Black Panther experience. This doesn't really have to do with the movie itself. That's why we're keeping it separate from the review. But we just have some uh, final thoughts about the uh, whole experience that the way Disney has been handling uh, the Black Panther. Disclaimer. I, Balachon, I work for the Walt Disney World Company in the theme parks as a character performer for 12 years. And over the years while working for the company, I noticed that whenever there's a new movie presented by Disney, they always offer some sort of character meet and greet experience in the parts, in the Disney parts, where the guests can come meet the characters, get their photo taken, get their autographs, and have a wonderful experience meeting that character for whatever new movie Disney is promoting. And in the past, Disney has, when Guardians of the Galaxy 2 came out, you can meet Star-Lord and Groot at Hollywood Studios. And a few years ago, even when Doctor Strange came out, Doctor Strange was able to meet Doctor Strange at the parks at Hollywood Studios. I was very disappointed that Disney did not have the opportunity or chance to have a special character meet and greet with Black Panther. And since Black Panther was a very successful movie, I feel like it was a very missed opportunity for Disney to offer a character meet and greet experience with the Black Panther. And my note is that uh, some people have compared the Black Panther film to uh, Lion King. And in fact, one of my friends, he's upset that so many people want to compare it to the Lion King. But I'm sorry, it's a fair comparison, okay? An African monarchy based on a cat motif, a king's trust is betrayed by his brother, and one of them winds up killing the other, a secret unknown prince returns for revenge, a younger royal sibling is in charge of special powerful technology, the monarchy can be decided through ritual combat, characters get advice from dead ancestors, that scene... Where they were to tell us about all the old kings and queens. I was looking for James Earl Jones. Like, I, know, I know Disney still has him on speed dial. I was looking for James Earl Jones. I would have been laugh my head, my head off if I saw James Earl Jones anywhere in this movie. So, yeah, uh, if those who want to compare it to The Lion King, especially if you've seen The Lion King 2 and the, the um, Lion Guard cartoon, it's legitimate. It's, you know, there's a lot more going on than those comparisons, but yeah. Don't be ashamed to go make a comparison, especially since they're both owned by Disney. <laughs> mm -hmm.